The ballerina is very glamorous. She's passionate. She's very womanly. Mm -hmm. um, well, George loved women. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think some of that came from the way he saw you? I was such an apt pupil. I was so anxious to dance the way he wanted us to dance. I wanted to be exactly like I would see the result of how he would have the other dancers. He would say the same thing to them, but how wonderful they looked, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was just, everything he said, I immediately, and you know, they say ballet dancers must have tunnel vision, and it's true. You don't leave the studio and suddenly forget about everything you've been talking about. You leave the studio and you have tunnel vision. You think, now, this is what I'm going to do. And you know why, Jordan? Because it's pure magic when it's right. It's just magical. It's, it's so wonderful. It's, it's so, for me, it is a wonderful experience to work with dancers who respond, who understand, who see the difference. I've heard other dancers talk about how working with Balanchine was like opening, uh, Violette Verdi described it as opening a box of treasures. And you'd find things in there that were perfect for you, and you never would have known it if he hadn't sort of put them out there. He could make each one of us, by certain gestures, become more beautiful. He says you take a beautiful woman and she becomes more beautiful. And of course, the same thing was true of the man. But he had this incredible ability to understand how women work on point. What he really worked on was épaulement, the shoulders, the mo movement of the shoulders. You know, he never stood in front of us and showed us. He would stand facing that way, and we would have to, all of us, would look in back of him and try to emulate what he was doing. And it, it was incredible, because this is what he worked on. And he would take our hands, he would take each finger, and he would say, now, it's like a piece of sculpture. Each finger is shown. In other words, be aware of your hands. Be aware of your arms, pour des bras, movement of the arms, breathing here. People sometimes would talk about eyes. Oh, the eyes must do this. He said, no, the eyes come as a result of what you have done down here. This is a result of this. It doesn't begin with this. It's, you know, what a genius, and until he died. He was thinking of ways to make us more beautiful, as I was trying to do with the dancers about, you know, uh, the port de bras, how it frames your face. And finally, what you are looking at, you and the audience, I know I am, I'm looking at the face of the dancer. They must be vulnerable. If they're not vulnerable, there's no mystery, there's no poetry. You danced in the Raimonda that Balanchine and Danilova... When I was 18 years old in Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo, mm -hmm. Balanchine and Danilova did a remake of Raimonda. What, she had an incredible memory. She could remember every step from Russia that she had danced. I don't think George thought that much of it, so she did mainly uh, the reconstruction of the Raimonda. And it was very old-fashioned, and um, yes, I, I didn't dance a leading role. As I said, I was 18, and I, I, but I was the understudy for Danilova, so I learned her role. And then when he made Paradis, I read in your autobiography that he asked you to help him remember. He asked me to show him what Danilova danced, right. so I did, and he sat and he looked at it. And then he just started from the beginning and changed it. <laughs> so more or less the same pattern of the floor. Her entrance was the same, more or less, but completely different gestures. He made it more into modernized, more interesting version. Oh, that's one of my favorite solos in, in all of the pieces that mm -hmm. I've seen. And to me, it has an incredibly sultry, oh, yes. voluptuous, Oriental. It does. It quality. is Oriental. Yes. This time, when she goes like this, mm -hmm. this is like as if there's a veil here, you see, and she does this. And I'm not sure if anybody does it. Just like a nutcracker, they're supposed to act as if they're hearing something, and you really hear something, you see. The gesture, just like I was talking about 
with the hands and saying thank you, you know, and how you give the hand. It's all so important. It just makes me furious when I read these things, Palanchine was so mechanical, he, you know. He was a poet. George was a poet and a musician and the greatest dance maker that ever lived. And I'm so <laughs> lucky I was there. And I knew it. I was just lucky. When you were learning Paradis, he would give you that one clue. Would everything fall into yes, place? Yes, yes. Yes, that's, what, that's what's so wonderful. And until he died, he was thinking of the best way to relate to us how to be poetic, how to be vulnerable, how to be beautiful, how to make us more interesting, you know? He really was thinking, it's, it's, you mustn't take a Balanchine ballet and think, oh, I have to do those steps. I better look in the mirror to see if there are. That's the wrong way. No. You have to understand what is the style of this. This is Bolshoi ballet style. Now I know how I want to dance it. It's constantly amazing to me to hear that he would, that he would trust the dancers enough to think that the steps and the music would tell them what they needed to know. But he would demonstrate. He demonstrated all the time. Even in his regular shoes and his jeans, he would demonstrate. He would certainly demonstrate. He would. But he had a wonderful way. You know, you've heard me say to the dancers, look into the lake. He said, look, here is a balustrade, a gate, a balustrade. And you look over that into the lake. And it gives your face a sudden look. It's not just this. It's looking into the lake. Or he'd say, reach up your cheek as if somebody is going to kiss it. And I always think of Natasha in War and Peace when she comes into the room and lifts her cheek to her father. You know, to, to be able to do just this requires every movement of your back. But he never said that. He never said the second lumbar or the third spot. You know, he said, just reach up. And yes, when I was talking about écarté position, how important. All Balanchine's ballets are écarté, serenade, all, and the beginning of the pas de dix. It's, and you saw how suddenly the face takes on a completely different look than this. This is very difficult to look beautiful, <laughs> you know? In other words, these are framing your face. And it's so important. These, your shoulders, that's your emotion. and you with your partner. I don't have to look at you in the eye and say, I love you. I can say, I love you, you know? There are moments you said character dance, character dance. Oh, yes. Hand is on the hip, and it's character dance. They actually do, like a mazurka, which I fortunately learned from Madame Nijinska, who was my teacher from the age of 12 until I was 17. So I learned a great deal, especially about character dance from Madame Nijinska. So. But it looks much more elevated. Well, that's because uh, you're on point. You're not in your boots, you see. Then you dance differently when you're in your boots. But the minute you put on your toe shoes, you're still a classical dancer. It's with all the tradition of the Mariinsky, all of these were my teachers, you know. What about, um, there was that moment when you were, uh, she's doing a sort of almost like a crisscross on point that he said it's like walking, just like, like walking. walking. It is. In other words, your knees are just relaxed. Don't try and, uh, pas de bourrées. He made his work by the hour on pas de bourrées. We began at the bar, coupe front, in the count of one, one, and then it became one, one, and then it became one. <laughs> you know? In other words, the knees are relaxed in pas de bourrées. They relax and then straighten, relax, straighten. And that's a gliding step in between steps. Now that we're back down to the, what's here, we're so important with Balanchine. I mean, the pas de bourre, the glissade is very important. The pas de courroux is very important. And where you are looking when you're doing most of these steps. You know, it's, uh, it's every gesture has so much importance and it makes all the difference in the world. You're either vulnerable or you're not. You either have mystery or you don't. If you're sitting in the audience and you couldn't care less what they do next, they haven't, they haven't reached you, you know. And George made everything, every ballet that he ever did, maybe a few exceptions, should communicate to you 
the music. What he wanted mostly was a sense of style and mainly musicality. That's so important. I mean, you hear that music and you just have to do what it says because there's nothing else to do to that music. George devised these steps for this music.